Welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Arsenio ZSL Podcast. Oh my God, it feels like I haven't done one of these in such a long time. Um, you know, again, very, very grateful. Grateful that the numbers on this podcast, man, I've reduced my podcast to just four episodes a week. The numbers completely fell, but then now you got, I don't know who it is that's downloading. Big shout out to Australia. I'm going to give you that. Uh, big shout out to my Taiwanese, baby. I love my Taiwanese like no other. Boy, I love y'all like I do my next breath, okay? But man, the numbers have skyrocketed and I'm just so happy that my, you know, I used to get so happy a long time ago when my podcast would blow up. And of course I had the very big podcast, but now e- each of my podcasts always get 200 to 300 plays within the first week. And so it goes to show you that, man, the numbers are starting to pick up and stuff. So with that being said, people, man, we're going to be diving into the good stuff. Now, I've been very busy in the morning, lots of coaching, lots of students nonetheless. So, so excited about the number of students that I have. And now it's all about squeezing as many podcasts and like literally like the time that I have, if I have an hour, I have to make the most of that hour. That's how crazy my days are now. And the days are so crazy that, you know, by the end of the day, my voice starts sounding a little bit bleh. You know, so I cannot scream like I used to because, you know, on the days I could scream, I had probably about four hours of teaching, but now I got nine and I'm doing training at a logistics company. And I have, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, You know, a group of students that I have to travel to on a routine basis, like on the other side of town. So I'm going to have to make sure that I utilize my voice as much as possible. Nonetheless, with that being said, today is about tackling problems. Today is going to be a little interesting Okay, because both you and I are going to be taking notes. Okay, and we're going to be taking notes in regards to overhearing a conversation, and you are going to have to try to work out what the problem is. So we're only going to hear one part of the conversation. And what you're going to do, you're going to like make make notes such as it sounds like it seems as though there has been some kind of mm by the sound of it. I'm not exactly sure whether mm or whether mm, and it's definitely something to do with. Now, these are the notes that we're going to have to take throughout this entire audio, okay, which is just under two minutes. After that, we're going to listen to the other side of the conversation, all right? And so at the end, of course, you are going to decide whether or not, well, what would you do if you were Graham and Piedor? in this situation. So something has gone terribly wrong, all right? And we have to take notes in terms of both what Graham says in this first audio and then Pewter, the one that has the problem in the second audio, and then what you would do in regards to that, all right? And then again, the access badge, I'm gonna try writing this down, but my, my, what is it? The early access badge to get all my podcasts in advance and a lot of the language that goes along with this, like the matching sentence beginnings and endings. It's available for $5 a month or $45 for the year. If you want to show your support, it is readily available. All right. And so nonetheless, with that being said, let's dive into this audio. So here we go. Three, two, and one. Hello. Yeah, speaking. Is that you, Piotr? Uh Aren't you supposed to be at the trade fair in Krakow? What? <laughs> we go. Let's you go. haven't got a stand. Well, how did that happen? Oh, here we go. Maybe it's the laptop you're using. Well, what happened to our laptop? Those carriers, they're unbelievable. That's the last time we use them. I'll give them a piece of my mind when I speak to them. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Where's Liesel? Who? Liesel? Weasel? Sounds like Weasel. This just gets worse, doesn't it? (laughs) What's Uh, gone wrong with the brochures? The brochures? Oh, boy. Portuguese? Oh, no. That may be because I forgot to phone Tony. You remember we were going to attend the Lisbon Trade Fair originally? Ah. 
it completely slipped my mind. Oh, I'm really sorry, Piotr. Well, we're snowed under at the moment, trying to get things ready for the Midas launch, but look, don't worry, I'll sort something out. Can I call you back in an hour? There it is. Now, snowed under. If you listen to my TOEFL ITV podcast, that means an idiomatic expression that they are very busy. They are very, very busy. So with that being said, here we go. Let's make notes of what, well, I took notes of what happened. There's no stand, okay? Maybe it's just a laptop you're using. And then what happened to our laptop? And then it goes into the carriers. Okay, they're unbelievable. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. So basically what I can make out from this conversation is there's no stand. It sounds like a carrier problem. Maybe it's the laptop. What happened to our laptop? And it sounds like the carrier didn't even allow them to take the goddamn laptop. So that's why he's going to say, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind, meaning he's going to cuss them out. He's going to go full on American on them. Oh, hey. Oh, my God. I love the full on American. And then he said, it just gets worse. And you know what? I was talking to another one of my, uh, you know, potential students, and I told her about Murphy's Law. She's like, listen, people were screaming in the, you know, the testing center. And I'm like, listen. Whatever can go wrong on your test will go wrong. It will go wrong. Whatever can and will go wrong, it absolutely will on the first time you take the test. Now, I don't approach things with a negative mental attitude. I always come about the day saying, how can I make my sessions, my podcast, everything I do today, how can I do it with excellence? And so I write that down and say, what intent do I need to establish? So I'm not one of those people who wake up and say, oh, man, Murphy's Law is going to fucking kick my ass today. No, I'm not one of those negative people. You already know because you love my podcast. Okay. But in saying that, giving them a, you know, it's saying it just gets worse is meaning the problems are continuing to pile on top of one another. And then apparently it looks like the brochures are in Portuguese because they were supposed to have that Lisbon trade fair, supposed to, not exactly sure, but I can just tell you right now that the brochures are in Portuguese. So that's what I can make out from the conversation. I don't know what notes you've taken, but what's going to happen now, we are going to listen to the second part of the conversation and we're going to see exactly what went wrong. So here we go. Three, two, one, people. Track 22. Here we go. This is Piotr. Hello. Graham? Yeah, speaking. Is that you, Piotr? Aren't you supposed to be at the trade fair in Krakow? I am at the trade fair in Krakow, Graham. I'm just about the only thing that arrived here in one piece. What? Well, the stand got badly damaged in transit, so I've basically just got a table here, a few chairs, and a couple of posters with nothing to attach them to. It's a complete disaster. You haven't got a stand. Well, how did that happen? Don't ask. Look, it's not just that. I've just tried out three of the promotional DVDs and two were defective. Wouldn't play at all. I don't know how many more are like that. Maybe it's the laptop you're using. Oh, wouldn't surprise me. I had to borrow it from another exhibitor. Well, what happened to our laptop? I'll give you three guesses. Those carriers, they're unbelievable. That's the last time we use them. I'll give them a piece of my mind when I speak to them. Yes, well, never mind that now. You've got to do something, Graham. I'm working flat out on my own here. Where's Liesl? She's come down with some sort of virus. I left her at the hotel. This just gets worse, doesn't it? Wait till you hear about the brochures. What's gone wrong with the brochures? The English ones are okay. The others are all in Portuguese. Portuguese? Oh, no. What? That may be because I forgot to phone Tony. You remember we were going to attend the Lisbon trade fair originally. And you didn't tell Tony about the change of plan? It completely slipped my mind. Oh, I'm really sorry, Piotr. Graham, you've got to get me out of this mess. Well, we're snowed under at the moment, trying to get things ready for the Midas launch. But look, don't worry, I'll sort something out. Can I call you back in an hour? Okay, I'll be waiting to hear from you. Damn. Oh my God, well, it sounds like it was far worse than I could imagine. Um, 
Oh my God. The only thing that arrived, the stand was damaged. The posters can't attach anything to three defective DVDs. Nobody has DVDs anymore. First of all. Okay. Nobody uses DVDs anymore. You got to use a PowerPoint just in case. And then, um, yeah, again, you know, the laptop, the carriers trash. Um, listen, it just looks like everything that did go wrong. It was much worse than I can anticipate. Snowed under is a TOEFL ITP idiom. It's an idiomatic expression, meaning they are very busy too. All right. It doesn't necessarily mean that there is snow. So for all you TOEFL ITPers out there, hey, you hear the basic idiomatic expressions on a routine basis and slip my mind is another one, meaning he had forgotten. So that is the situation. How can you tackle these problems? Well, what we're going to do, we're going to listen to the third conversation between them. And what we're going to do is on the early access badge, you have in, matching the sentence beginnings to the endings in terms of this conversation. Let's hear how they solve this problem again like i said what could go wrong will go wrong but it's all about being proactive with finding out the solutions i'm a results driven individual okay i don't care about the blah blah this that this that i've worked with people like that five to seven years ago but when i have a problem and sometimes like i said what could go wrong will go wrong if i could give you a very small problem i had well it was actually a huge problem well, I had a complete wipeout in my saltwater fish tank. All of my fish died. And I said, well, I could keep this water or just start over from the beginning, but later on, no, like next year. So I drained that entire tank. I drained two tanks. I retired one of them. The other one, I put completely new water in it. You haven't started trying, you know, mixing salt water and whatnot uh, because, yeah, I just haven't started that process. But at the same time, you know, I just had to tackle the problem by saying, well, I have a bunch of dead fish. I'm going to be sad for about six hours because everything was going well. But I fucked up with not quarantining two brand new fish from one of the big markets out here in Thailand, JJ. And I'm guessing they had ick, velvet or brook, one of the three notorious diseases, because there's no other way that there could be a 24 hour eight fish wipeout. There's no other way. There's no other way. Like a dying snail. I highly doubt that. So with that being said, it happened and I learned from it, but I tackled the problem by saying, well, I'm not going to buy anything else. I'm going to retire. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to learn about phosphates, nitrates, silicates, salinity, and just take myself out of that. I still got four other tanks, one of which is thriving with plants. Another one is thriving. Very, as a matter of fact, three fresh water tanks are thriving very well with new fish and fish I didn't even know that were still in the tank, which I'm very excited about because now they've grown up into almost an adult, you know? And so me, that's how I learned from it. I just say, fuck, I'm sad for about six hours. I'm brokenhearted. But then I say, you know what? I'm gonna take myself out of this game. I got one little small saltwater fish, a Clark clownfish that's left. I'm just going to nurture that one and I will get back into the hobby, the saltwater hobby probably just before December, I'll probably get myself a pair of beautiful orange clowns or maybe some black storms. But I want to make sure that I have a chiller. I want to make sure that I know what the water content is. I want to know how to test the water. There are a lot of things I need to learn about water before I get back into it. So that's kind of how I tackle a problem. It's like, holy fuck, this sucks. But okay, all right. But in terms of business, you know, it's kind of like just tackling them one after another. So let's see how they did this. And here we go. Let's dive into the last Track audio. Track 23. Baby. Hello. Hello, Piotr. Graham, you said an hour. Sorry, I got held up. What's happening then? Right, I've been on to the carriers and they're sending a new standout on the next plane. You should have that by tomorrow morning. Well, at least that's something. Can you get hold of the organisers and tell them we'll set up tomorrow at 7? Yeah, sure. I don't suppose you remember to put another laptop in with the stand? I've sent two, just in case. Oh, right. Good. Thanks. And do you happen to have a phone number for the promotions people? Because if those DVDs are defective, I'll get them to send more by courier. Mm, I've got it somewhere. Graham, is there any chance of sending someone else out here? Kim, for instance. 
Piotr, you know how short-staffed we are here right now. What's this exhibition costing us, Graham? $18,000? You're right. I'll check with Liz and see if she can spare Kim for a few days. Thanks. It's murder here. Well, I'll see what I can do, but I can't <laughs> promise anything. <laughs> and would you mind getting some brochures to me in Polish, seeing as I'm in Poland? Yes, we're having a few problems with that. Seem to have run out. Is there any point in sending the ones we've got in Russian? No, Graham, not a great idea. Send the German ones, if that's all we've got. But are you absolutely sure we didn't order a reprint of the Polish ones? I'll look into it the minute I get off the phone. OK, but could I ask you to hurry that up a bit, please? It's pretty important. I know, I know. Would it help if we got a local Polish interpreter in? I know you speak Polish, but it might help you out a bit. Well, I wouldn't have much time to brief them on the product, but... Yeah, anything's better than nothing. OK, I'll get onto that right away. Uh, leave it to me. I did leave it to you, and look what happened. Yeah, well, y you're doing a great job, Piotr. I owe you one. Oh, my God, I love it. He said, I did leave it to you, and look what happened. Calm down, Piotr. Again, no need to make people feel bad. Just say you got to handle the problem, but at the same time, how can you avoid this in the future? Um, I, there have been a number of times that I've showed up totally bare ass naked. I know that's a horrible idiom, but I showed up and I'm like, dude, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. People are looking at me and I'm like, oh boy, what the fuck are we going to do? You know, um, there have been English camps, you know, with very bad government schools, no doubt. But, um, you know, that we showed up and we're like, okay, what's our plan of execution? Then they ended up on the last day, although we already, it was a failed situation no matter what, because they didn't like us no matter, like from the beginning. But they just ended up saying, okay, the students aren't happy. We're going to cancel right now. And it was probably the worst 72 hours of my life back in October, 2014, you know? But at the same time, what did I learn from it? Well, two to three weeks later, I ended up having an amazing English camp for four to five hours and ended up having an amazing time out with some of those pseudo teachers. But, you know, like you just in, you know, on the drive back, you know, I got an interview call and that's the job I ended up working for for three and a half years. So like I said, sometimes you got to look at, you know, not the glass half, uh, I'm sorry, the glass half empty, but half full. Right. And so things happen. They're executed on plans. They got a new carrier stand. They're going to be sending it to them tomorrow morning to laptops uh, a few other things. The guy says it's murder here. And I could only imagine $18,000. Hurry up and send someone out. I don't give a damn how short staff they are. Send someone out ASAP. Try to get a local interpreter and see what we can do to clean up the mess. It's all about being proactive. So with that being said, people, thanks for tuning in. If you want to see some of these phrases and different things that can help you with your English, again, the early access badge is available. Let me know. Follow me on my Arsenio's ESL podcast page if you're interested in, of course, contributing to the work that I do. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next podcast over and out.